It's the Easter season leading up to Pentecost, and we have this devotion for you. There's a popular exclamation prayer of this season that has its answer, and then when you give the answer, there's, a, there's an echo back. This is how it goes. The Lord is truly risen. He has risen indeed. He has risen indeed. Alleluia, alleluia. Let's try that with you all, okay? The Lord is truly risen. He has risen indeed. He has risen indeed. Alleluia, alleluia. And now just repeat after me. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. That the Lord has made. Let us rejoice. Let us rejoice. And be glad in it. And be glad in it. That's a verse out of uh, the Psalms that predicts the great day of Easter or the Lord's day when he comes among us. And when Jesus rose from the dead and everything about Jesus' ministry falls into place and is all true. Because the resurrection means everything about Jesus' life. And then after the resurrection, he does all these amazing things leading up to an ascension and Pentecost. And we're going to think about that as we go through your short exercises in the Easter season. And so let us get started. The fifth week of Easter. Boys and girls, we're on page 275. Love one another. So happy Easter season. We're still in it, okay? And it's getting to be springtime, so the world's changing to look more pretty with uh, colors coming back and flowers and and uh, blue skies and all of that. So we're glad but the most pretty thing that happens in the world is love from people's hearts. And I think in Easter time, it helps me to be a little more excited about the fact that I belong to God and God loves me and he brings his love to me. And then I can like show my love for others. So uh, Mrs. Steve, I always like to think of things that just happening lately, not stuff that happened long ago. But I think so like this week. OK, so I went to the Home Depot Okay. Okay. I was shopping for some plumbing things. Okay. Okay. Just easy plumbing, easy stuff. Okay. And so, but I, I was wearing uh, a facial covering. It was a little hard to tell who I was and I had a hat on. Okay. So I don't think it was that obvious who I was. Okay. So this person recognized me. (laughs) Okay. They recognized me and they said, Hey, is that you, Father Barry? I go, yeah, it is. Hey, do you remember we took a walk? Remember we took a walk? Of how long ago was that? Like a few months ago? Yeah. Gee, we said we we're going to get together again. Yeah, we did. And then I, I, uh, I said to myself, I gotta, I gotta come over and visit their house. So I said, when would you like me to come over and visit your house? He goes, how about a little later on? <laughs> I said, okay, right. You know why I said yes? Because I wanted to share some love with him. And I, he and his wife wanted to share some love back to me. We're beginning to be friendly to each other, right? And we both are Catholic, okay? We're all Catholic. And we're trying to, like, encourage one another, right? And so I know that they have had some tough times, and I've had, I've had my challenges too. But we can help each other. We can love each other, right? And help, I, I think we're just helpers to each other. But uh, I said, God, the reason why I'm in this store and that guy's in the store at the same time, even though I'm hard to recognize, right. <laughs> like Most Jesus great. on the road to Emmaus, you know, yes, yes. it's like, hey, is that you? I said, yeah. I said, do you want to get together? And you know how you say, yeah, let's do it someday. And then it's like months later, you haven't done it. We did it that day. That, <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's hey, I wonderful. got some time free, you know. So that's so I just think love one another is all about that. It is. Love one another. Let's read together. I'll read it out loud. Family members show their love for each other by words and actions. We say, I love you. I forgive you. I'm proud of you. 
We pray together and help each other. Throughout his life on earth, Jesus often emphasized how important it is that we love one another. On the night before he died, Jesus told his disciples, love one another as I have loved you, so you also should love one another. We call this the new commandment. The early Christians took the new commandment very seriously. This is one of the reasons the early church grew. We show our love to one another as the early Christians did. We forgive one another. We take care of those who are in need. We pray for one another. We bring the healing presence of Christ to those who are sick and troubled. As the early Christians did, we love one another, not just by talking about Jesus, but living as Jesus taught us to. Let's turn the page, and the activity is one of the act of love. And so you, with your family members, maybe you can bring the leader or select who's the leader, then a reader, and in here it is scripture. It has read the first le letter of John, and then there's a part for everybody to pray it together, to be mm -hmm. together. Yeah. And so... Just remember, again, that Jesus has taught us to love one another and to treat each other as we ourselves want to be treated. And if you can live by that in this Easter season and throughout, you'll live as Jesus wanted us to live. When we think of Easter season, we think of the Resurrection Day, Easter Sunday, and then we go all the way up to the Ascension and then the Pentecost, 50 days later after Easter. The beginning of the story is this, that on the first day of the week, meaning Sunday, where the disciples were, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. And when he said that, he showed them his hands and his side. And the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus, in his resurrection appearance, said to them again, Peace be with you. Now as the Father sent me, so I send you. And he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. Now many days later, Jesus was with them along the Sea of Tiberias, the Sea of Galilee. And he revealed himself in this way to Simon Peter, Thomas, Nathaniel, and James and John, and two other disciples. They were out fishing. And Jesus called out to them from the shore, Children, have you caught anything to eat? And they answered him, No. He said, Cast the net over the right side of the boat, and you will find something. And they cast it. And there were so many fish, they were not able to pull it in for the number of fish. Now, the disciple whom Jesus loved, John, said to Peter, It is the Lord. Simon Peter jumped from the boat and came to the shore with the other disciples later coming in the boat, dragging along a net with many fish. And Jesus said, let's come and have breakfast. They all realized it was the Lord. And Jesus cooked the bread and gave it to them and likewise the fish. And they remembered his miracle of the bread and the fish earlier in their ministry. You know, later they... They go to the mountain for the ascension. And then Jesus said, I'm sending the Holy Spirit now to you. This is my finished work to live inside of you. And so that work is what we're praying for as we go through the Easter season. For the Holy Spirit of Jesus to live in us and through us and to give us power to be children of God. Mr. Stever, do you have that prayer? Yes, let's close with the prayer to the Holy Spirit. And it's found in the back of your book, though many of you may know it. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in them 
the fire of your love. Send forth your spirit, and they shall be created, and you will renew the face of the earth. Amen.